So breaking news, man. Keith Thurman out. He out. Falls injured in training and he's out. Now we're gonna read this article, get to my commentary after that. It says uh Keith Thurman has been declared out Monday for March the 30th pay-per-view. Main event versus unbeaten WBO 154-pound champion Tim Zhu because of a training camp injury. The car will remain in Amazon Prime Video pay-per-view for the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas. And premier boxing champion officials have worked Monday to replace Thurman with Sebastian Fundora, considered uh, the front runner to land the spot now they ain't getting specific on what the injury is that ain't happening right but he's injured nonetheless it is what it is bro i ain't gonna hold y'all man keith thurman just the pump fake king he just the pump fake king man what y'all want bro he done pump fake this three times in a row this makes number three so i ain't surprised that he ain't gonna fight uh tim zoo now, I do think that when you get a press conference, when you get the live Zoom call meeting with Sean Porter, and all, when you add all of those little details to it, I think it's all unnecessary that he, he's still pump faking. But, bro, he the pump fake king, man. He was supposed to fight your Dennis Ugas, right? After Errol Spence fought your Dennis Ugas, he was supposed to fight your Dennis Ugas. He pulls out of that fight, right? They would have they would have guaranteed him a number one slot to see the winner of Errol Spence and uh Terrence Crawford. Excuse me. He pulls out of that fight, right? Then he was supposed to see Mantez Stanionis, who in Mantez Stanionis and Virgil Ortiz were supposed to see each other. Right? They were supposed to see each other, but they both kept falling injured. The WBA decided to scrap that fight altogether. They 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 put Keith Thurman in the slot where he could see man test standing on this they actually started to have some back and forth with each other in the media you know, about styles and and who would win the fight and then he pulls out of that fight for for tim zoo he pulled out the fight with the man test standing on this for tim zoo and now we got reports that he's injured oh, i mean he's just a pump fake king bro <laughs> now i ain't gonna hold y'all man this fight with sebastian fundora is just a more attractive option Right when I when I looked up the details on Keith Thurman versus Tim Zoo, it was a catch weight. Um, it wasn't for the WBO championship goal. Um, Keith Thurman only had a few more pounds to gain to make the 154 limit, but he wanted to drain uh Tim Zoo too. Right, it's it's too much. Right, it's too much. It's it's an unnecessary fight. For a guy who's trying to become a, a undisputed champion at 154 pounds, it's all all that is unnecessary. Not to mention, Tim Zhu was on the losing end, right, of everything. Because think about it, if he beat uh, Keith Thurman, he's supposed to beat Keith Thurman, right? The guy's a smaller guy and he's older than you. You're supposed to go in there and beat him. Anything Keith Thurman done in that fight where where he, it looked like he was besting um, Tim Zhu, they was going to blow that up. Lord forbid he actually won a fight, right? If Thurman actually beat uh, Zhu, I told y'all that kid wasn't that good. Uh, I, I told y'all he wasn't, he wasn't like that. I knew Thurman was going to beat him. He's just a paper champion, this, that, and the third, right? So it was a lose-lose situation for Tim Zhu. He was going to be called not so good if he would have won. He was going to really be called not so good if he would have lost. This, in, in every way, shape, form, and fashion, is a more attractive option, bro. Sebastian Fondora, although, right, although we, he's coming off possibly one of his worst performances with being knocked out by Brian Mendoza, he still got a lot of clout for what he pulled off with beating Erickson Lubin. That's a lot of clout that's still there, bro, because he beat the crap out of Erickson Lubin. No offense to Erickson Lubin. By the way, but bruh, he beat the crap out of that guy, bruh. He Erickson he still showed a lot of heart. Like he showed a lot of heart, bruh, but damn, right? Saying that to say, he does have a lot of clout based upon that particular scenario alone. Having three great fights, fighting the three, three of the top guys in the division back to back to back, that's actually kind of crazy. I mean, Erickson Lubin, uh, first, 
get the knockout, see Brian Mendoza, you get knocked out, go and see Tim Zoo. If he were to win this fight, if he were to win this fight, bro, he put himself in a, a nice chair for legacy, bro. Technically, right? I mean, you see the ups, the downs, and then you see him rise again, right? So that's kind of crazy. But uh, yeah, if I'm Sebastian Fondor, I do not take this fight, bro. Man, the PBC knocking on my door and asking me to get into the ring with Tim Zhu on two week notice. I've been preparing for one guy, so I am, I, ha- I am fully trained, right? I, ha- I am fully prepared. But, bro, I haven't been preparing for Tim Zoom. I'm preparing for somebody else, right? And now to save the PBCs behind, right? Because that's what this boils down to. They got to give us a main event for this because they don't want to. They don't want to um, give back that ticket money. They don't want to give that back, bro. They don't want to pay that back, right? They can't pull that. They they trying to impress Amazon. They they can't get that money back. Excuse me. So the show must go on, right? But putting me in a situation where I couldn't watch footage, I couldn't have a plan A, a plan B, a plan C. I can't properly say I've been preparing, fighting some of the bigger sluggers in the game to prepare me for the power and fight some of the biggest sluggers in the game with power and speed to prepare for Tim Zoo. No. Either y'all going to cut the check, cut the check, or y'all going to go find somebody else. And I would love to see Jesus Ramos step up right now. I would love to see Jesus Ramos. If that was ever... Because uh, we know Erickson Luba not going to fight Tim Zoo. We already know that, bro. We already know that Jamel Charlo is possibly not even going to fight the whole year. Sebastian Fondor is definitely a good option. I'm, I'm not taking it away from Sebastian Fondor, but he was already preparing for somebody else. Let that man have his fight. Hazu Ramos, bro, would be a great fight. Now, I don't know if he could beat it on a two-week notice, but, bro, that would be crazy. Hazu Ramos right now versus Tim Zoo, that would be crazy, bro, but we have to wait and see. Now, I'm pretty sure if Sebastian Fondor does take this fight, man, it's going to be an after-school special, bro. Like, this is like a... Uh, what 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 we like with kids, and uh, you have those two guys, right? You probably even been that guy sometimes, right? Where you get into an argument with somebody in school, and y'all plan to meet each other, maybe at the park or at the flagpole or down the street from the the school, and y'all gonna have a fight, right? You got a lot of kids gonna watch. Y'all have like this 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 circle kind of fight. And uh, yeah, man, that's possibly what this is going to be. I don't think that Tim Zhu is going to be able to do a lot of film study on Sebastian Fondora, vice versa, if it was to happen. I mean, it would be a pretty classic fight. I just don't see Sebastian Fondora having what it takes, especially when you see the outing with Brian Mendoza, uh, where he was knocked out by somebody that was not supposed to knock him out. That's just my opinion. Y'all can take that with a grain of salt. Mendoza is good. I'm not taking it away from Mendoza, bro. I will never sleep on Mendoza because of what he did to Sebastian Fondora. So I'll never sleep on him, bro. But Fondora was not supposed to lose to Mendoza, bro. No, he wasn't. Uh, Mendoza is is possibly one of the most passive-aggressive guys in the sport. Like, literally passive-aggressive. Like, a lot of people said it about Shakur Stevenson as well. But... But Brian Mendoza is possibly worse than Shakur Stevenson when it comes to being passive aggressive, bro. You can see him in rounds where he don't punch at all. Like he he just trying to stay away from the conflict. He's in the ring and he he just ain't gonna punch, bro. And I think what happened is Sebastian Fondor fell asleep at the wheel. He was bored. He was agitated. He was irritated. He was tired of chasing Mendoza around. And then he got clocked, and that's what put him down. Like you dig what I'm saying? So I don't think it was a scenario where it's the worst performance. I think he just got outwitted in that particular fight. But he lose to Brian Mendoza. Tim Zhu going to come after you, bro. He going to come after you. I would rather see Hazel Ramo. That will be a lit-ass fight. But I'm pretty sure the PBC probably can't pull that off. They probably can't pull it off. And not to mention um, where Erickson Lubin beating. Jesus Ramos, he technically don't deserve to get a a, a, a a title fight with Tim Zoo. I'm pretty sure this would be for the WBO Championship gold, which is why I put it up there because they both 154 pounders. So instead of fighting for um, 
uh, to be champion in recess, right? Instead of fighting to be champion in recess, he gets to fight for the actual WBO championship goal if he were to take this fight. I just don't think he can win. But this is the RTH Podcast, man. I'm your host, Nephew, and I'm signing out. What y'all think about this video, man? Are we all in agreement that Jesus Ramos should be this guy? Are we all in agreement on that? Because, uh, yeah, it should be Tim Zoo, Jesus Ramos. And even if they don't put the belt on the line, excuse me, even if they don't put the belt on the line, they should let that fight go down. Tim Zoo, Jesus Ramos, that would be a little bit more entertaining than Sebastian Fondora. Although, I'm not talking this fight down. Sebastian Fondora and Tim Zhu is cool, but I would rather, like, if, if Sebastian Fondora lose, I'm going to feel some type of way about it, right? I'm going to feel some because he, he ain't get a whole count. And if Zhu lose, I'm going to feel some type of way about it, too. I'm going to feel some type of way, like, Zhu goes into the ring with, with Sebastian Fondora on two-week notice, preparing for Keith Thurman, right? He was preparing for a smaller, quicker, um, kind of gentleman chasing somebody around, you know, the ring, trying to cut the ring off type-ish, like, you know what I'm saying? And now he got to prepare to punch up. He preparing to punch upwards now, and he only got two weeks. He was he was going to be punching straight or down, right? Because I do think Tim Zhu might be slightly taller than uh, Keith Thurman. So he was preparing to punch straight, you know, just straight, boom, boom. Now he got to punch upwards. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it changes a lot. It changes a lot of the dynamic in this fight because of this this late this late uh, fighter change. But it is what it is, man. RTH Podcast, y'all's nephew, I'm signing out. Keith Thurman is the pump fake king, man. Y'all put that in your uh, your schedules. The anytime Keith Thurman talking about getting to the ring, be prepared for the pump fake, man. Y'all take it easy, eh, bruh. Peace. RTH Podcast going live, man, with Brawl Night Champions for members only. Party chat debate for a shot at the Community Board Champion, but remember, it's a fight, so don't get knocked out and lose your place in the ranks. Or if you're just here to be a part of the spectacle, that's cool too. Sign up for the first tier to get front row seats to each event and get exclusive content not seen on YouTube. No my tier, but don't get kicked out. See rule books for more details. Oh yeah, ladies and the legends are included if you want to spectate or go for some gold. Brawl Night Champions, sign up now.